Hi there! In this video, we're going to be talking about library databases. When most of us think of libraries, I feel like we still have this mental image of physically walking into a library and checking out books. But libraries also have such a huge array of digital resources now. And if you're a university student, you have access to the library databases through your university account. So what exactly are library databases? Now, whenever I visualize the concept of library databases, I always tend to picture those little Russian nesting dolls because my family has had a set of these since I was a child. And so imagine that this is a library database. The library database is going to house, if you can get it open, your journals and then those journals in turn will house your journal articles. When you're doing your research, obviously this is what you're seeking. You're looking for specific articles that you might be able to incorporate into a paper, for example. But you need to have some understanding of which databases are most likely to house these kinds of articles. So let's work backwards. Let's talk about journal articles first and how they differ from other types of sources. And we'll work our way backwards to those databases. Journal articles are often referred to as academic journal articles or scholarly journal articles. These all refer to the same thing. These are sources that have undergone a peer review process. Now, as a student, you may have done peer review before in class, meaning that one of your peers, in your case, a fellow student, has reviewed your work and given it back to you with feedback for revision. It's the same basic concept, but when it's experts doing peer review for the sake of publication, the process is much more complex than that. So let's say that I am a public health expert or a scientist, and I would like to publish something I've written to a scholarly journal publication. So I will submit my work online, but then that's going to go to an editor uh, and then to reviewers who are fellow experts. You don't know who they are that are reviewing your work and they don't know whose work they're reviewing, but they could just reject it outright and say, this is not up to par, or they could send it back with feedback for revision and it could be for minor revisions or it could be for major revisions. And this could ping pong back and forth for quite a while before my paper is ever published to that academic journal. Even if I have a PhD in my field, even if I have 20 years experience, even if I've been published before, it doesn't matter how much of a big shot I am, I still have to go through this peer review process. And that is why the kinds of articles that we find in the journals are the most reliable kind of information that we have access to. That doesn't mean that there is zero chance of error. It's still created by humans, reviewed by humans, and there's always that possibility. But it's much less likely for that to occur there because of this peer review process. Now let's talk about our journals. So journals are the publications that would potentially publish my work as an expert in a particular field. You can almost think of them as highly academic magazines that get published periodically. There are journals for all kinds of fields. For instance, you might have a journal that focuses just on the biological sciences, meaning that anybody who publishes to that journal is contributing something new to the field of biology. You might have a journal that focuses exclusively on neuroscience. You could have a journal that focuses on 17th century literature. You might have one that focuses exclusively on Shakespeare, meaning that every single paper published to that journal will have something to do with the study of Shakespeare. So journals can be fairly broad in their scope or they can be very narrow. Where do we find these journals? We find them in the library databases. And just like the journals themselves, the databases can vary significantly in the kind of information that they offer. So for instance, you might have a database that focuses on medicine. That means that all of the journals you'll find within that database are journals that publish articles about medicine. So if you're researching something medical, obviously these are going to be useful databases for you. 
However, you'll also find databases that hold all kinds of information from varying fields. These are called multidisciplinary databases because they have journals from multiple disciplines. So when you're researching in that database, you might find something on diabetes, you might find something on Shakespeare. To sum up, once you know what you're researching, your first step is to identify which databases are going to be the most suitable for your search. Sorry, databases. And you know that they're suitable because they house the right kinds of journals. In other words, the ones that are most relevant to your topic. And now you know that you will be finding tons of relevant articles within those journals, which are within the databases. That's it.